Hello everyone, welcome to this vlog. Thank you for joining us in this worship. It's good that we continue to worship together as a, a Christian family, whether physically in church, for those who are able to, um, and also in these online vlogs and 60 second slots as we keep together as a, a, a Christian community until the time comes that we're all able to meet fully together again. So today's vlog, once again, comes from the sumptuous rich language of the Book of Common Prayer, some of my favourite uh, phrases in the English language. And um, I hope that if you're not familiar with it, you'll just listen to the language and let it wash over you and, and speak of those wonderful things. So let us pray. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved brethren, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. And although we ought at all times humbly to acknowledge our sins before God, yet what we must chiefly so to do when we assemble and meet together to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, and to ask those things which are requisite and necessary as well for the body as the soul. Wherefore I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace, saying after me, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spur thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises, declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may have it hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance, and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Benitea Altus, Exultimus Domino. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, and
and a great king above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth, and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it, and his hands prepared the dry land. Come, let us worship and fall down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation, and said, It is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways. Unto whom I swore in my wrath, that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us, in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of his hands, at the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness, before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people, for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Almighty Father, who has given thine only Son to die for our sins, and to rise again for our justification, grant us so to work, put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve thee in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 13, beginning at the first verse. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. While he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? And what will be the sign that these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumours of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth of pangs. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I was once involved in organising a, a church uh, fete sort of carnival and um, lots of planning had gone into uh, this event and we planned uh, all the, the stalls and all the entertainment and all the prizes and where everything was to go and uh, it was planned to be held outdoors and everything it was planned so well uh, that it would have gone off absolutely perfectly had it not been for the fact that on the afternoon in question the heavens opened 
and the whole thing uh, was waterlogged and had to be hurriedly shoved inside and it wasn't half as good as it, it would have been. Uh, we'd been so involved in planning it, it had become so big, in other words, in, in, in the minds of the planners, that it had almost become too big to fail. We hadn't took into account the possibility of something, of it, um, something going wrong to make it fail. So that it actually wasn't as good as it, had, it could have been if we had taken that um, failure into account. That's a phrase that we hear quite often. Um, something's too big to fail. But I don't think that's a healthy way to view any uh, object or organisation or event. If it becomes too big to fail, I think something has gone wrong. I was uh, sorry to learn that uh, British Airways is uh, retiring its entire fleet of Boeing 747 jumbo jets. I uh, have fond memories of travelling to South America on a big, powerful, luxurious jumbo jet. Um, and also that Airbus are ceasing to manufacture their giant enormous plane, the A380. It's simply because since jumbo jet first entered service in 1970, um, airlines and air travel have changed and will change dramatically when it becomes normal again from uh, the time in 1970. So, um, it, it's 50 years ago, if you go 50 years before that, back to 1920, uh, travel was considerably different in 1920 and in 1970s. It's hardly uh, surprising that aeroplanes have become um, faster, more efficient, uh, with a longer range, more uh, comfortable, um, less polluting, and people uh, are less uh, want, likely to want to fly in huge numbers to a hover or to then catch another plane, when planes can go directly now from one place to another. So uh, it's not so much it's failed as it's uh, uh, times have moved on, times have changed. Nevertheless, you wouldn't think that something so huge uh, and obviously um, majestic and powerful would have, um, in today's aviation, not be uh, successful, not be needed. And it's not as if they're going to disappear from the skies because jumbo jets, I believe, are still going to be used um, extensively for cargo transport, but uh, not, alas, uh, anymore for passengers. There's a whole history of things that have been thought of as being too big to fail. We can just think in recent times from Northern Rock to Lehman Brothers, General Motors, and you can go back further in time, the Titanic, go back even further, um, the Tower of Babel. One thing in Jesus' time that was uh, not even uh, contemplated uh, failing was the building that Jesus was talking about, the temple, which had become the focus not just for Jewish people in Israel, but for the whole Jewish, what's called diaspora, the uh, Jewish people living all around the ancient world, from Rome and Alexandria and Caesarea, all, all, all the cities, uh, wherever you went, there were substantial Jewish communities, just as there are uh, today. But this temple was the focus, and you could see it for miles because it was on top of a mountain, Mount Zion. And Jesus is there predicting that this will come to an end. It's going to become too big in, in the Jewish imagination to fail. But fail it did, spectacularly so, in AD 70, when the uh, Jewish revolt resulted in the destruction, not only of the temple, but the whole Jewish nation. One of the former um, chairs of the U United States Federal Reserve, Alan Greenspan, said that if something's become too big to fail, it's become too big. In other words, if something becomes so important that so many things rest on it, that it can't, it can't countenance the possibility of it failing, then that has become too big. It needs to be broken up and become smaller so that other, lots of other smaller things can rise up and then it, the, the risk is spread much further. But we don't even need to think of this just in economic terms. We can think of it in uh, spiritual terms and indeed in personal terms. If something perhaps has become so um, absolutely um, massive in our, our own life that the, the idea that it has always got to succeed, it can never, uh, nothing can ever go wrong in it, then I think that's a, something that's gone out of balance in our own life. And you go back even further in the Bible to the Tower of Babel, maybe. And you look at the Tower of Babel, people thought they were so important, so 
uh, clever and strong, that they could build something that would reach up to heaven. In other words, make themselves equal with God. Well, we all know what happened to that uh, and failed spectacularly, it did, and it crashed to the ground. And all those people, instead of speaking one language, were told, uh, spoke lots and lots, and that's how language, um, well, one idea anyway, of how language uh, developed. Um, but the point is, God saw something that was thinking itself so important and became so big that it actually had uh, to fail because it was trying to be something that it wasn't. Maybe from God's perspective though, the opposite is true. Something becomes too small to fail. And instead of humans make, bigging themselves up literally and make, trying to claim equality with God, God, in fact, reversed the situation and did the opposite. And he made himself the almighty, most powerful thing that, beyond our imagination, so small that he entered his own creation and so small within it that he ended up being um, crucified and executed and seemingly um, on Good Friday, absolutely failing. But if something's become so small that it can't fail, that that's the pattern that God shows to us in Jesus, emptying himself, God emptying himself, um, the canonic idea of God's um, coming um, devoid of all his grandeur and power and becoming so small that he can relate to each one of us and we can relate to him. And when we do, that will never fail. Thank you.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the set the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, everlasting God, who alone work us great marvels, send down upon our bishops and curates and all congregations committed to their charge the helpful spirit of thy grace, and that they may truly please thee, pour upon them the continual dew of thy blessing. Grant this, O Lord, for the honour of our Advocate and Mediator, Jesus Christ our Lord. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you very much for sharing in our worship, in sharing this vlog. Please do remember that both our churches, St Francis and Emmanuel, uh, are now open for simple family communion services twice a week uh, on Sunday mornings, 9.30am Emmanuel and 10.30am St Francis and on Wednesday mornings at 10am at St Francis and Thursday evenings at 7.30pm at Emmanuel. Uh, full social distancing measures are uh, in place. Um, we ask if you do come, you uh, wear your uh, face mask. Uh, please bring it with you if you can. If not, we do have a small supply at each church. Uh, it's really lovely to see you and uh, enjoy worshipping together for those who are able to. But these vlogs will continue so that we all uh, can worship together in uh, one community, whether in church or online. So until the next vlog, thank you for watching and stay safe and take care and God bless.